Ethan Cohen once said about you, he's normal but crazy, <laughs> like everyone else, only more vividly. <laughs> yeah. uh, how'd you get hooked up with the Coens? Big River, and then I left Big River to do a David Byrne film, of all things. And, and I did three in a row, and during the middle of each film, I would audition for the next film. And in the middle of uh, The Big Easy, a film called The Big Easy, I was in New York and got sent over to an office to meet Joel and Ethan Cohen. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know who I, they were? No, I, I didn't know anything. They, they had one film, which I hadn't seen, um, Blood Simple. Mm -hmm. And I went in there and just started goofing around with them. It's because they were funny, uh, Midwestern guys. Yeah. They had said at one point that we're all provincials. Mm -hmm. And you just had the best time not auditioning. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, OK, I read the thing. And then it was for Raising Arizona. I left. I didn't think much about it, and then other actors started coming up to me and said, "Oh, you got you got to get in to meet these guys." I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I didn't know it was a big deal, uh -huh. um, and we hit it off pretty well. <laughs> and I think the reason that they cast me was because I, I had a pudgy baby face, uh -huh. and the theme of the film was babies. <laughs> there were a lot of baby movies made in the mid '80s. <laughs> This is the most twisted, yeah. I think. Let's talk a little bit about some of those roles. I, uh, your Carl Monster Munt, uh, racing down the burning hallway, uh, screaming, I'll show you the life of the mind. <laughs> I just love that scene. Tell me about that character. Madman Munt? Yeah. Uh, that, that's what Ethan Cohen still calls me, Madman. He was a serial killer with a heart. Mm -hmm. Just a good-natured traveling, uh, commercial traveling salesman uh, with a racy necktie and uh, a gift of gab and the unfortunate habit of decapitating people. <laughs> yeah. And then he takes an interest in Barton. Uh, yeah, that's uh, you and uh, and John, John Turturro. <laughs> yeah, I think Joel told me that they had a vision of Turturro and I sitting on a flop house bed in our underwear. <laughs> And, and things evolve from that. I, I don't know whether to believe that or not. Um, perhaps your most famous role is in The Big Lebowski, where you play Walter Sobchak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you approach that role. Thank you to all my reactionary yeah. fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was all on the page, which I found the only Coen Brothers film I went into with a, a, a plan was uh, Raising Arizona. I, I wanted to play a guy that was a criminal genius with a two-digit IQ. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was is, is right on the page. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find that I'm in better hands if I trust material like that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think too much or bring too much to it. You bring everything that you have, but if you could do a script, but if you can do it intuitively and without thinking about it too much, I, I, I think if you serve the script, you, you're doing everything. But you are carving these characters in, in very memorable ways. I mean, it, it's not just the page. It is. You think so? It, it, no, it, it, it's not, but it is. It, if, if I treat it that way, yeah. then things come to me. I'll hear a voice. Mm -hmm. um, a particular way of speaking, uh, like Walter had a distinctive way of speaking that I heard yeah. by reading the script, uh, um, little ticks that were, to me, inherent in the uh, script. But that's intuition, and that is not to be fooled with. Um, if you overthink it, I think you, you, you're going to bludgeon yourself into boredom. Do you, do you envision the visual look of the character? For Walter, that was uh, Joel and Ethan wanted a, a what, what I called a gladiator beard. Uh, they called it the strap. And uh, the butch haircut, I think we both agreed on. Um, but it, it's always the voice, usually the voice that comes to me first, mm -hmm. something I hear off the page. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Big Dan Teague and Old Brother, Where Art Thou? And this year, the Cyclops and the, the yeah. Ulysses of drama that underlies all this. Um, and, and you really do get to club George Clooney. This is probably one of the great moments in cinematic history. Yeah, it, it kills me. <laughs> I don't think I know what you mean, Big Dan. <laughs> <laughs> George, I, I, I knew George was in the first year of Roseanne, and he had great hair and a great attitude. And yeah, we all, he, boy, he made me laugh. Yeah. And it's interesting the trajectory that his career has had. Is he working? <laughs> Maybe. He might a good kid. I don't think he works as much as you do. <laughs> he doesn't have to. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, Roland Turner in the Inside Lewin Davis. Uh, where you play? Uh, Roland Turner. Yeah. No, he's a jazz musician. And after we wrapped, after the film came out, uh, Joel and Ethan were discussing what instrument I played. I think Joel thought I was a trumpet player. Ethan thought I played sax. And I thought I played piano. <laughs> Who cares? Do you play any of those instruments? Yeah, when I was in high school, I got into um, blues. <laughs> No, nobody has a blues like a suburban white kid. <laughs> I suffered, baby. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd check out uh, from the library. I'd, I'd get old blues records and then um, picked up a harmonica somewhere and started uh, goofing around with that. And I really liked it. And uh, it, it's one of those things where I got too lazy to learn any discipline. So they're sitting in a drawer somewhere. All right, I'm in a blues band, so uh, one day you'll have to sit in with us. Uh, groovy. Groovy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>